Hello, um, welcome to the first in a series of videos that I'm doing for the assembly of He Dot. Today I'll be working on He Dot's head. Um, I'm only going to show you a bit at a time. I've had instances in the past where I've discussed a project with someone, it's taken me a few months to get round to it, and then lo and behold, they've kind of made the same or a very similar project. And I think it's sometimes we get inspiration from somewhere we can't quite remember where the idea came from so I'm just going to give you a bit at a time so today we'll just work on the head okay I've actually added to my list um, I didn't actually have this bit on so the plan is to use an ATC gift box for the head and originally it was just this and I thought that was kind of cute with the face on with a face on and then I started thinking and because I like steampunk I'm going to give them kind of a boxy top hat so I've added a two inch ATD which will gain on his head now you notice the elastic band it's because it's not glued together yet and we will be working from a flat pack one of these ATC gift boxes so you can see how that goes together as well so first thing we're going to work on is the hat So when you receive your parts, your ATC gift box, you'll have all these different bits. Okay. These are obviously the sides. I'll get the other one. So that's your front and back sides. We don't need those yet because they're for the main head. These bits are the two long sides again we don't need those for the hat so I'll put those to one side and then you've got um, the top and bottom of the box now the lid fits on the outside of the box it's a bit bigger so the bigger of these two pieces so obviously not that top one is the one that's going to be for the lid that will be the base of this box so you can put that to one side as well okay because I'm going to add the ATB to the lid, the first thing I'm going to do is draw a couple of lines on. Because I've noticed when I was doing a placement, you see these corners here? If I draw a line from that bit there to that bit there, it gives me the right spacing for what I'm gluing. So I'm just going to draw a couple of lines in place. Okay. And then the AT B fits exactly in those lines so that helps me with my spacing later on and they'll be painted over or papered over so it's not a big deal okay. remembering that this is the top of my box I'm going to turn it over and this work out how these pieces will fit so on each of your um, side pieces you've got a big square and you've got a small line you need to keep them the same way around so I'll show you it without the lid in place Oops. this is how they'll all fit on so you've got a small piece big square small piece big square small piece big square small piece big square it is teaching you how to suck eggs but um, sometimes I think the obvious does need to be stated especially if you just started doing these flat pack pieces so when this goes together, it all slots together like that. Okay, and the lines that I drew are there. So, using whatever adhesive you prefer, I'm going to be using glossy accents just because it's got the fine point 
and yeah, that's when I had to the fine point on finished. I do need to get some more fine point bottles. Um, Tina has some great ones that she uses. I'm going to get some of those. The lid is drying. I forgot my non-stick craft bag. Um, I've actually got it packed in a box because I'm trying to sort out all of my crafting stuff at the moment. So I'm hoping to make do bits of paper at the moment. While that's setting, I'm going to put the ATB together. Oops. Okay. Artist traded box is six sides, obviously, because it's a cube. You get two pieces that look like this and four pieces that look like this so this is what I usually count these as the top and bottom and these as the sides each of your pieces has one bit that sticks out and three indents the way that I put mine together is that the indents or the bits that stick out all go in the same direction yeah so when I put this together on here in, this is the bit that sticks out the bit that sticks out, the bit that sticks out is there, and the bit that sticks out is there. So it's like it goes round in a circle. So that when you put the sides up and glue them together, they're all going in the same direction and your top will fit on easily. Okay? So again, I'm going to work fairly quickly and I'm just going to glue that together. Elastic bands are your friends with this one because it helps with holding the whole thing once it's done. sticky out bits on this side so I need to go have it coming towards me this time as I showed you earlier this is the bit that sticks out here this is the bit that sticks out here so I'm putting it this way I'm not gluing the lid in place because to me that's a wasted opportunity for storage And HeBot is going to be mainly storage. So, elastic bands to hold everything in place. Okay, so that's his hat basically done. This is the next bit that I need. So, because I'm going to use his hat as storage, going to add one of these to pull the top of the hat off. Tim Holt sells these, I'm not sure who else sells these. I actually took these off of a little chest of drawers I got from somewhere that cost I think $1.99 and it was a three drawer little thing. It's cardboard so I can use brads for knobs on that so I've actually taken that off of there. So to find the centre I'm just going to draw across point to point Oops. pen doesn't want to work let's try sharpening That gets near the middle of my lid and I'm going to use um, my copper dial you can use any single punch that you use um, and I'm using it on the 1 8th setting which is the smaller setting of the two Punches the hole through there that I can now push that through. And that's the lid.
yeah so when you're happy that your itape is dry and your lid is dry using the two lines that have been drawn in place here and here you can get a guide for where to stick the itape so it's just looking at whereabouts it's going to sit when you stick it down okay Now you don't need to use glossy accents, as I said, that's just what I've got in to hand today. Just going to glue that down, and that's his hat ready to decorate. Obviously that knob there screws on and off, so I can take that out when I'm decorating and put it back when I'm finished. Okay, so there's his hat ready to decorate. I'll take the elastic bands off soon. I'm just going to give that a little bit longer to set. Okay, now we're going to work on his face. Okay, so going back to the original ATC box that I was showing you, this is going to be his face here. So you need to decide how you're going to put his face on. And what I've decided to use is. Um, another one of these studs, oops, sounds great. So I'm using another one of these studs as his nose. Um, I'm going to be using two of the circle tiles from Fernley for his eyes. I found um, on the chests that they do. Um, you get two of these handles and I don't always use them on the chests so I keep hold of them because they can be used on other things as an added element so I'm going to use this one for his mouth and every now and again Lou does off cuts and in one of the bags of off cuts that I got was this piece and I thought it looked like a moustache so that will be going there and that will be Hebot's face now this one's already assembled and I need to make a hole and the easiest way for me to do that is on the flat pack one so I'm actually going to make the head continue making the head from the flat pack So I'm going to take one of these and sit it alongside the completed one just to get the placements the same. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I need to mark where the nose is going to be. And then the lid will sit out there. Okay. So I'm just going to put leaving the moustache in place on my one. Just actually over a little bit. Okay, so I've got a little mark there. I'm going to pop these pieces in here for a second so I don't lose them. And again I'm going to use, there's no knock on there, I'm going to use my proper dial on the smallest setting which is the 1 8 to make a hole there. You can use a single punch, um, I have got a single punch but I use my proper dial so much it's an automatic go to so his nose will poke through there like that with his tash and his mouth and his eyes okay 
So I plan to paint the face and quite a bit of the body with burnt sienna. That's going to be my base colour. Um, and then decorate from there. So there may be metallic bits, there may be paper bits, I'm not quite sure yet. This is kind of um, evolving, but I've got a basic idea in my head of what I want to do. So the first thing I need to do is work on the eyes for this because they'll need time to dry. And then I'm going to assemble the actual ATC gift box this part I'm just going to give the eyes a bit of time to dry now I'm using white gesso you can use any kind of paint you can use acrylic paint it's just that I've got this in the right colour okay so the next thing we're going to do is assemble the ATC gift box you should have two of the wide sides you should have two of the narrow sides and you should have a base. Now your base is the same shape the whole way round, that's symmetrical. But you'll notice that again we've got the narrow piece and the big square. You need to do the same as you did with your lid and you need to chase it all the way around. So if I show you how that looks, big square this side. Big square this side, big squares going this side. Oops, try again. Try it with this one. <laughs> big squares going this side, and big squares going this side. And when that all comes up together, you'll see the sides all fit as they're supposed to. So I'm going to glue that in place, again use the glue of your choice, I'm going to do this quite quickly. So while that's drying, I'm going to go back to the eyes. Now I use the sponge applicator. So my eyes have got a bit of texture on them, they're not smooth. If you want smooth, use a paintbrush, not a sponge. Or use a brushing motion rather than a dabbing motion. But as he's a machine, he doesn't need totally smooth eyes. This is going to look a bit weird and I hope it works. I want his eyes to be at half past. So I'm just drawing a line right way across his eyes. I'm also going to give him some eyeballs. I'm working with a sharpie. I've not attempted this on Jesso before, so we'll see how this goes. And then I'm going to take my burnt sienna paint, which is what the rest of his head's going to be painted in. That's the eyes done. It's actually been quite easy because of the wedge chip on that to get the colour exactly where I want it. So that's his eyes done. And I might give him a slightly sleepy look by turning him that way. Okay, so that's how you make Hebot's head. Um, what I'll do is rather than have you watch me just paint the bits, I'll show you a picture of his head when it's finished. Because it's literally all I am going to do with his head is paint it with that paint same I used on the eyes and glue all the pieces in place okay hello I uh, just wanted to show you where I've got to so far I've given the head and the hat two coats of paint 
Esther Dancy and I showed you earlier. I've decided not to do the insides. I'm going to leave those plain. I've done inside. This inside is hat. Okay. Now there is no decoration to be done. This is just the basics of this so far. I don't know if you can see that the lines I drew, because I used a dark marker, are showing through. So I'll find a way to disguise that later on. And his face looks like this. Okay, so that's I've used black sharpie on this bit and this bit. That's the bronze bit I showed you, brassy bit I showed you earlier. For his nose, as you can see that sticks out. And his eyes. So I painted that all with gesso. And then I used an arc to mark across there and then cut makes and eyeballs for him. And then I painted the top part with the same burnt sienna. So I showed you that earlier. So there you go. He looks a little bit sleepy, which is what I wanted. I'm not going to completely decorate the hat and the head today. The reason being, most of my projects do evolve, and I know I keep saying this, and I'll probably say it a lot more before we're done, but... Um, I don't want to get the hat and the head looking a certain way and then the rest of the body goes in another direction. So I'm going to wait for finishing touches at the end. What I'm doing at the moment is, hopefully you can see that okay. This is Grand Express, so I've used that on another project recently. He got and she got are old bots. They're not new bots. They're not like the iRobot bots as you can tell. Um, think. Pixar's the rose box. They've been around for a while. They're quite old. This is before the upgrades happen. So they're a little bit dirty in places. So I'm just adding a bit. Down the edges. Obviously if you're doing a modern box. This isn't the step you'll need to take. But I kind of given them a backstory. They're um, a couple of older bots from the industrial age, from the mechanical age, and um, probably steam or gas powered. And I give them the backstory just because it helps me with the decoration side. Um, I am thinking of using paper on the body, so I'm thinking they're sort of a more genteel type robot rather than just your average work down in a dirty job kind of robot. The only reason they're dirty is because they're so old and they've probably been left somewhere and rediscovered. So this is quite streaky here. I'm not too worried about that at the moment because I'm not sure what decoration is going to go on the side of his head. And if needs to be, I can repaint. It's not a problem. It's had two coats using a sponge applicator. I really like that effect. And as you can see, I'm not being too careful with it. I'm not going to do it to the hat simply because I haven't decided how the hat's going to be decorated yet. I hadn't planned on a hat. I was just going to use the lid. He got kids growing. He was originally about 12 inches tall. He was going to sit down. Now he's going to stand. And he's got a hat added to that. So standing I estimated he was going to be about 15 inches. Now he's got a hat and that's added another two inches, so he's looking about 17, 18 inches at the moment. Maybe taller. He's going to be a huge butt. <laughs> This is just the head. I will do another video soon on the body. 
and the arms. Um, the arms are really quick at the moment. Here's a question for you all. I'm making the arms out of one inch ATDs and he still needs hands. So has anybody got ideas for hands for him? You could leave that in comments, it'd be great. We'll see what we come up with. I'm still trying out different things that I haven't settled on anything yet. I love the ombre of that, the dark through to the light. I think it's already adding character to his face as well. His face, just so you know, was quite streaky like hair. So I took the um, round sponge dabber and I dabbed paint on. And it's actually given a really good finish when you compare it to what I had originally, which was that. But I think I might get away with that for industrial robots, but then I might be decorating up there, I'm not sure. So, he bought head. I've bought the boxes that, I've got the boxes that have got the notches in, you don't have to have those. It was just a personal preference. Okay, so that's his head so far with his hat. The next stage will be doing the main body and the arms and possibly his neck to attach that but I'm not sure but the body will be the next part anyway so thanks for watching any comments any suggestions any feedback good and bad please let me know please put the comments in the box I love hearing from you all um, if you're going to be following along I'd love to see what you do with he dot and she dot and I'll be back soon with another installment Take care. Bye.